and start. Okay. Um, so yeah, my name is Brianna Gonzalez, admissions counselor for MassArt. Um, so who in here is like sophomore? And junior? Senior? Okay, awesome. So a lot of this information is going to really pertain to you seniors, but for you sophomores and juniors, just is gonna be a jump start on things to think about, okay? So how many of you guys have been to Boston? Quite a few of you. And have has any of you visited our campus before? No? Okay. So one really important thing, doesn't matter if you're going to art school, liberal arts school, whatever, you really want to try and visit the campus. It's really going to help when you're making your final decision. So when you go on campus, you want to think about things like what kind of community is there? You know, what kind of classes can you take? What are the faculty like? What kind of environment um, is being fostered by the institution? And what kind of community, is it a healthy community for you as a student? So I have a really quick video. Hi, welcome, welcome. Um, I have a really quick video that's gonna highlight some of our facilities. Um, so you'll get a chance to see some student work. You're gonna see student work throughout the presentation. Um, so please be excited um, as we watch this video. chance to see some of our facilities but again especially for schools that you're interested in applying to if you can visit campus that's really going to be something that's going to help your decision um, once you hit that point so at MassArt we offer a BFA does anyone know what a BFA or a BA is you can raise your hand you can shout it out anyone have an idea so a BFA is a Bachelor of Fine Arts. 
And so when you guys are looking at degree programs, um, most art schools are going to have some form of a BFA, which is pretty much breaking down to about two-thirds studio, one-third liberal arts and history of arts courses. So it's about three studio classes and about two academic classes per semester. A BA, completely opposite. You have one-third studio, two-thirds liberal arts. So with a BA, you may be going to a larger university, you may be minoring in art and majoring in another subject. With a lot of BFA programs, you're majoring in that studio, whether it's printmaking or graphic design, etc. You're getting a lot of studio time. So as you're thinking about where you want to go for school, if you're interested in being in the artistic field, a BFA may be something really helpful to you because you're getting that extra studio time. Something else to think about, not only just the type of degree, but also the accreditation of the school. Um, accreditation pretty much just means that the institution is giving you a quality education. Um, some schools have none, some schools have one or two. Um, so at MassArt, we're part of two accreditation associations, which means if you're thinking about you know, going into a major like architecture where you may need to get a master's, all of your credits will transfer, okay? BFA is awesome. It's something that I went through when I was in art school, and it was really helpful because I got a chance to take a lot of different classes. And so I'll explain that when I talk about the foundation year. So MassArt was founded in 1873. We've been around for a while. We were founded as a school that teaches teachers. Um, so we were founded as an art education school. We still have a really great art ed um, department today, but we've really expanded. We have 19 different majors now. We're the first and only remaining freestanding public college of art and design in the U.S. Most are going to be private. Um, and we're the first art school to grant a degree in the U.S. So we're a really old institution, and we're really focused on making art accessible um, and art education accessible for everyone. So when you guys get a chance to visit campus, this is kind of a snapshot of what um, it looks like, kind of a nice bird's eye view. So you have kind of our academic buildings on this side and all of our dorms are kind of on this lower side. So we're located next to two major museums, the Isabella Stewart Gardner and the Museum of Fine Arts of Boston. Both are free for you to go to as mass art students. Um, the ICA uh, Institute of Contemporary Art of Boston, which is a little bit further downtown, is also free. So that's an opportunity for you to see work from artists worldwide, go to lectures, really, really cool spaces. We also have the Bachelor and Payne Galleries on campus. Those are run by MassArt, and they're the free largest contemporary art spaces in New England. Um, and they're actually going to be expanding our gallery um, in the next couple years, so we're really excited about that. Here on the bottom you see our residence hall. So Smith Hall and Treehouse are for freshmen and returning sophomores. And the artist res is for transfer students and upper level students. And I'll talk about housing in a moment. Uh, we have about one million square feet of space between kind of our studio, exhibition, living space, etc. We take up about two city blocks within kind of the Boston area. So we're pretty large size. Um, for our undergraduate students, we're at 1600, which is pretty big for an art school. Most you'll find are going to be a lot smaller, maybe like 500. Um, but compared to some larger liberal arts universities, we're pretty small. So we're right smack in the middle as far as size, a really great community on campus because we have this number. We have seven interconnecting buildings, and those are all of our academic buildings. And again, we have those three residence halls. So for where are you going to stay? Our dorms are right across the street, which is awesome. So what you just saw was the tree house, which is our newest building. This is Smith Hall. And next is the artist res. So you have those options as students. Again, your freshman year, your guaranteed space in tree house or Smith Hall. Usually students end up staying off campus by the time they hit sophomore, junior year. But if you would like to stay in the artist res, those are apartment style suites. It's based on a lottery system. So you'd sign up and then housing would determine who stays in that space. Smith Hall and Treehouse are suite style. So two rooms with a bathroom connecting in the middle. There's work rooms and lounges on each of these floors. So there's always somewhere to work, somewhere to hang out. The RAs are really awesome. There's always really fun events going on. And I know, especially in the Treehouse, they themed the floors. So they have, I think, an Ellen DeGeneres floor this year. Yeah. So 
So yeah, they have an Ellen DeGeneres floor. I think they have like a Sonic the Hedgehog theme floor. So lots of different options as far as things to do, um, people you're meeting, you're meeting a lot of friends in that foundation year that you may have later down the road, which is awesome. So the foundation year can happen in some BFA programs. This is also something you wanna think about. Are you going directly into your intended major or are you going into a foundation year? So at MassArt, you're gonna be taking these classes you're following your spring semesters. You're doing drawing, 2D design, 3D design, time-based media. You have a studio elective, so if you're interested in a specific department, your spring semester, you can take a class in that area. Um, and you have a couple of history of art and liberal arts courses that you need to take. So again, everyone goes into this no matter what major you think you're going into. You're actually not gonna declare your major until March of your um, kind of spring semester. Again, this foundation year is awesome because it's giving you all the tools that you need to be successful in whatever major you go into. Um, and you meet some really great friends in that as well. So usually about March, your spring semester, your freshman year, um, we have a big kind of majors fair. So you get a chance to go talk to faculty and other students about the majors you're interested in. And you can go into any of these 19 different areas. So everything from design to more traditional fine art. Um, I, I know that there's some jewelry people in here. So we have a jewelry and metal smithing, small metals major, painting, illustration. Um, you can do a lot of different things within these. So basically what happens is once you're in your major, sophomore year through senior year, you have your major requirements. So let's say you're in printmaking, you're gonna have your printmaking major requirements. You have to take those classes. But you have about two classes that are open every semester. So if you're in printmaking, but you're interested in taking a graphic design class, you're able to do that. You can take classes in different areas. So if you're interested in more than one medium, you're free to kind of schedule um, your classes however you would like to really make the most of what you're doing in your studio practice. So once you're in the classroom, and this starts even in your foundation year, your classes are gonna be pretty small. We have a 10 to one student to faculty ratio. So for your studio classes, you know, you're really not gonna see more than that. You may see even fewer depending on the course um, and what type of class it is. So you'd like to keep it really intimate. All of the faculty are working artists themselves. So you're learning from people who are constantly making art, constantly learning themselves. So they have a lot of really great feedback and ideas to give you. Um, a lot of the staff, including myself, are artists as well. So you're on a campus where pretty much everybody's making something, which is really cool. Everyone's really passionate. So faculty, staff, others you may meet on campus are really great about helping you find professional connections for when you wanna find jobs or internships inside and outside of school. One of the departments that mainly focuses on this is the Career Development Office. So if you need help putting together your resume, looking for a job or internship, attending one of the job fairs that we have on campus, this is a really great resource for students looking to build their professional kind of identity. It's gonna be something that may really be important once you graduate. Did you know about 80% of our graduates are in some type of creative field since they've graduated? So I have three examples for you of what people have been doing with their degrees for MassArt. So we have Tom Ward. He graduated from our sculpture department in 2011. He is currently the owner of his own craft uh, shop. And he, basically he makes weaponry. Really cool, right? One really awesome thing that he did was become a Fulbright Scholar, which is an amazing opportunity to receive grant funding, to do research, travel, and make art. So he went to Sweden and he recreated a fully functional powder cannon, which is in a museum in Sweden right now. So this is one kind of way you can go. You can be a gallery artist. You can use your art really to kind of be in galleries, be in shows, and make money that way. Or we have Sabrina, who graduated in um, industrial design in 2012. She's currently working in the mayor's office in Boston. And she's specifically tasked with thinking about solutions for affordable housing, thinking about you know who's living in those spaces, especially for the middle income families in Boston. So she's really specifically thinking about spaces where people are gonna live and how they're using those spaces. And if you guys have been watching Project Runway this semester, our very recent grad, Erin um, Robertson, it has been killing it. 
Um, I think she's won like two out of the four challenges, which is really cool. So she's gone on to kind of really pursue her fashion degree, which is really awesome. And she won a really great um, fashion designers award, which is really helping. Now you see here that there's two majors up here, fashion and fibers. Some students will double major. This is probably the most common. The second most common is majoring in a studio department like illustration and history of art, which is a more liberal arts based major. So you can, it really depends on what you wanna do. Usually though, it means you're gonna be there an extra year. So that's why those studio electives in your major are really important because you can still take classes in other areas. But if you are interested in double majoring, it does happen. So what are some things um, that you can do on campus? You know, you're, you may be thinking about taking one major or double majoring, but you still can't find certain classes on campus. We are a specialized visual arts school, so we may not have those foreign language classes you're looking for or those really complicated math or science classes. So through Colleges of the Finway and ProArts, those are two consortiums um, that allow you to cross-register and take classes at the different schools you see here. So on the liberal arts side, you have Emmanuel College, Whitworth, Simmons, Wheelock, and MCPHS, which is Mass College of Pharmaceutical and Health Studies. All of the schools within the COF consortium are literally within six blocks of us. So really easy to take a class at another school in an area you may be interested in that may be outside of art. You can take up to two classes through cross-registration per semester. If you're thinking about maybe more performing arts, music, dance, theater, you can cross-register to places like Berkeley, New England Conservatory, Boston Architectural College, Emerson, the Boston Conservatory, and SMFA and Tufts. All of those schools kind of specialize more on the performing arts side. Um, we have a lot of students who cross-register at Berkeley, for example, with their sound engineering courses. Um, and maybe you're interested in advanced math and science topics or robotics. We've had a lot of students cross-register at MIT as well. So lots of opportunity to take classes in different places. You can join a lot of the clubs through these schools as well as sports. So Emerson has Division III basketball. You can join a tennis team, swimming, what have you. There's always a lot of really awesome things happening through these two consortium. So on campus, these are our student groups. So this is a really small sample of some of the um, activities that we have to offer for students. So we have everything from a gardening collective to competitive gaming club, crafters, carnival, costume design, lots of different kind of things that you can get into as far as you know, you really just kind of want to have some fun. Um, one I really specifically want to talk about is the Mac board. Um, and they are specifically, um, working to make sure that there's events going on, overseeing the types of events that are happening, and really helping students organize them. So this is a sample of some old and some recent activities that have happened on campus. So Ferris Bueller's Day Off, they had a drive-in, they set up a projector in front of the treehouse and everyone kind of sat outside and watched it, it was really cool. They wouldn't let me go to the mac and cheese bar because it was for students only, but it smelled delicious. Um, you can go to Mass Mocha. There's a like five, ten dollar um, bus ticket to New York for the day. Go see the MoMA with your class. Really, really fun things going on. Um, we have the opportunity for you to travel and study abroad. So your freshman year with your studio elective, you can take one of these travel courses. They change year to year, um, but some of them, like Italy, we've been going to for a really long time. So for most of the semester, you're on campus, and then for about two or three weeks over winter or spring break, um, you actually go on location with your whole class. And this is for the travel courses. Once you hit junior year, your fall or spring semester, you can travel internationally, or you can travel nationally. So our mobility program is stateside, 43 schools of art and design, throughout the US and Canada. So, you know, if you wanna to go to California or if you wanna to go to Texas and you really are interested in a specific program at another art school, you'd be able to go there. You're paying mass art tuition, which is really important. You'd pay housing, transportation, and living costs while you're there. So all of those credits that you'll be getting at that other school are gonna transfer into mass art and you'll still graduate on time. It gives you just another way of working, being in a different environment, We've had a lot of students take advantage of that mobility program.
The international exchange is exactly the same, so you're paying mass art tuition. Um, there's 11 other countries which we have an agreement with, so you're really able to go a lot of different places, and it's really awesome because you may be making totally different work from when you left than when you got back. And again, you're paying mass art tuition for this, so you're covering housing, transportation, and living costs. And we actually just became members of a scholarship fund where you can actually apply to get money to actually pay for a living while you're studying abroad. So how much does everything cost? What are all of these things, you know, what's kind of what's going on? What's tuition like? So our out of state is 32800 Because we are very committed to our New England neighbors, uh, we're able to offer a tuition discount for students who live within the New England region, which includes you guys. So you guys would pay the $23,600 for the full year. Housing is about $13,000 average. Really depends on where you stay. That does include your room and board. And your books and supplies are about $2,100 estimated for the year. Really depends on the major. Some are a little bit more material heavy than others. So, you know, you're looking at it, you know, a pretty good sum of money. Um, but, you know, how are you going to pay for this? Well, you may have saved up some, but you really want to make sure, especially you seniors, if you haven't started filling it out, you may want to think about filling it out, you know, pretty soon. It's been open since October 1st. Um, so filling out the free application for federal student aid. This is for any school you want to apply to. If you think your parents make too much or too little, fill it out. That's the way most schools are going to figure out what kind of institutional funding they're going to give you. So. Again, seniors, you should be filling this out now for you juniors and sophomores, just something to think about. So through the FAFSA, need-based grants, loans, work-study, and merit scholarships. So work-study, a really awesome opportunity to work on campus. 10 hours a week, you're making minimum wage, it's pocket change for you, which is really awesome. So if you're filling it out, check off the work-study box. You may not, but it's always a good idea. You know, maybe you wanna be a photo tech or work in a library or work anywhere on campus, a really great opportunity. For the merit scholarships, one in particular comes through the admissions office. So when we receive your application, we're looking at your app, your grades, and your portfolio, and we're able to give about 80% of the students who apply some sort of merit scholarship. So let's say you get $2,000 each year. Um, it's renewable each year as long as you're in good standing at the school. So that's you know pretty good amount of scholarship money over the course of your four years at MassArt. Um, and again, about 80% of students get some sort of financial aid, whether it's merit-based or need-based. Our deadline is still gonna be March 1st. And make sure to go to fastfoot.ed.gov. There's still a lot of scammy places that will try and get you to pay for it. It's free, it has free in the title. Um, so just be really careful as you're going through and filling this out. So deadlines, what's the application like? We're common app this year. So if you guys are interested in applying, um, please feel free to check us off on your common application and send your application our way. We will also have the MassArt application available online as well. So we are looking for the app and the slide room fee is gonna be a total of $70. We're looking for an essay. If you're filling out the common app, they have prompts in there, feel free to use those. If you're filling out the MassArt app, it's really kind of open-ended. It's a writing piece, 500 words. It can be creative, autobiographical, whatever you want to write about. We want to get a feeling of who you are. Two letters, oh, I'm sorry, uh, resume. So things that you've been doing in school, working, volunteering, awards you've won, scholarships you've won, anything. Again, we want to know who you are. And so that resume can literally just be like a bullet point list. Two letters of recommendation, guidance counselor, art teacher, anyone who can vouch for your work ethic and your studio practice. Your official high school transcript, freshman year through senior year. And one important thing to note is that we are now SAT, ACT optional. So if you send them to us, we will not be using them to you know, decide if you are accepted or not. We'll mostly be using it for data. So for those of you who have awesome SAT scores, great. You can definitely submit them, but again, we're just using them for data. Um, so this kind of makes us look at your grades a little bit differently now. So, you know, we're looking for things, we're looking for trends, you know, how are you doing freshman year through senior year? What kinds of things are happening? 
So if you're a student who kind of, you're not really sure, grades aren't where you want them to be, it may just be that one of us will call you and be like, hey, what was going on that you got, you know, this grade in this class? Um, I would say don't be too worried about your math and science. You definitely want to try and keep about a B average. That's usually what our students come in with, a 3-0. Um, but you know, if you're struggling in math and science, we understand I'm definitely not a math or science person. Um, but your English and your history grades are going to be really important because that's what, a little bit more where we're focused. So again, students coming in are about a 3.0 average, um, but it really ranges and we're willing to work with students no matter where they stand. We're looking for a portfolio, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, but do we have any international students in here? No? Okay. So our early action deadline is December 1st. It means you're finding out early. Usually we like to get decisions out early January. Um, this is a non-binding decision. So for you seniors, if you're thinking about applying ED anywhere or early decision anywhere, that is a binding contract. That means you will be going to that school. Early action, again, just means you're finding out early. You're gonna get your financial aid packet early and be able to compare you know, the different places that you're applying to. Our priority deadline is February 1st. This is especially important if you're thinking about housing. So, what everyone's been waiting for, the portfolio, what exactly is it? How do you put it together? So, if you're applying to art school, each school will have different requirements. This 15 to 20 piece um, minimum, uh, maximum is going to be pretty standard throughout all schools, but the way they want you to put your portfolio together may be different. So, if you're applying to multiple art schools, be careful double check the requirements. Some may want you to include a picture of a bicycle or five to 10 observational drawings. At MassArt, we just want 15 to 20 pieces of your best work. Doesn't matter the medium. Um, usually this is work that you created your junior and your senior year. So what you're gonna see in these next slides are images from students who applied uh, last year, their seniors last year and their freshmen this year. So this is really recent work. This is students who are really excited um, about submitting and kind of showing us what's going on with what they're doing. Um, and so this is to give you an example of what students are putting in their portfolio. As varied in medium and content as this kind of portion of the presentation will be, you can, fun you can put your portfolio together in the same way. Maybe you're thinking about still life and design and how you can kind of incorporate those things. Or maybe you're working with illustration. Take an inventory of everything you've done your junior, your senior year, in class and outside of class, and figure out what is the work that you're most passionate about. What is the work that you really, really love and that really represents you as an artist? So whether you're doing line and thinking about color or maybe just thinking about you know, your composition and your line work, or maybe you are doing still life drawings, figure drawings, please feel free to include those. They are not required for a mass art portfolio, but if you have them, you really love them, we do see you know, quite a few in different portfolios. So it's really up to you. If you're working with still lives, maybe you know, make it exciting, change the composition. How can you kind of intertwine yourself into the things that you're drawing? Maybe you're working in 3D or non-textile media. Show us what you're working with. Maybe you really love needlepoint. We have a fibers major. You can really you know, work in that once you get into school. You know, maybe you are doing jewelry or you're making other sculptural objects. Please feel free to include those. And this is a really great way to show um, how you can put more, one, more than one image on one slide. So especially for you jewelry students, similar to how you have here, you can put them on one slide. It will still count as one, but you just have a little bit of extra work in there. So I have a question. Did anyone tell me what this is made out of? I hear. Yeah. And said pencil shavings. No. Paper. No. It's close. Paper? It's tape. It's rolled up masking tape. Yeah. Isn't that cool? And what about this one? That might be easier. Yeah. The startup paper. <laughs> you guys got that one. So yeah, you can use different types of materials if you're interested in using really weird things. 
Figure out how to put your own spin onto it. Maybe you're working with time-based media. You have short GIFs or even longer pieces. We take up to 15 minutes of video um, or time-based work. Maybe you did a film, you wanna show us some stills from that. This is an example of a film still that a student submitted. If you're doing photography, um, we have a lot of photography students just submit photographs for the portfolio. That's totally fine. If you work in one medium specifically and you wanna show us 20 examples of that, go for it. But if you're working in multiple media, feel free to really kind of vary what kind of work you're putting in your portfolio. So for photographs, maybe think about situations, environments that may need a visual aid that are kind of hard to explain in words. You know, include that poster that you made for your friend's band or that graphic novel page that you've been working on for a while. Show us things that are in process. You know, if you really like kind of this way of working and you want to show us how you're making something, include it. Um, this piece is made out of cardboard and that piece up there is a clay piece. So you can see the student showed us, you know, how they're thinking about designing it and then what the final product is. Maybe you've had a project that you've been working on for a really long time. You can include that work. You can even include works that took you five minutes, a really quick gestural sketch that you did waiting for the bus. Maybe you're working with the figure. Maybe you're transforming the figure and thinking of new ways to create characters. We love mm -hmm. seeing original character designs, so if you have them, please feel free to include them. Maybe you have a page full of hands or feet that you just really love. Or again, gestural sketches, you want to capture movement. You can take pictures of your sketchbook. If there's a spread that you really love that you want to show us, feel free to take a picture of it and include it. You know, as you are kind of putting your work together overall, think about composition, think about color, what are some ways that you can, you know, tell a story if that's what you want to do or help give the viewer clues as to what's going on. Maybe you are thinking about the environment and the perspective and the mood. Maybe there's a really interesting design element that you really like to enhance. Go for it. Again, we want to see the strongest work that you have that represents you as an artist, no matter what the medium is. So this is an example of one full portfolio. So the images you saw were from multiple students. This student is kind of strong in some areas, especially in the 3D, maybe a little bit weaker in other areas, but she has a range, right? So this is how you can put your portfolio together. If you have 3D, 2D, photo, drawings, collage, and you really love all of those works, put them together in your portfolio. Or again, if you're working in one medium, um, like photo or time-based media, you can send us a portfolio of just that. Just photo, just uh, film and video. So when you're putting your portfolio together, it's really important to think about how you're presenting it. What's wrong with, this, with these images? Can anyone tell me? I hear whispers. Yeah. Exactly, the background takes attention away from the piece. <laughs> so cropping is really, really important. It's gonna make it a little bit easier for us to see what's going on, and it makes your work look better. So if you have a smartphone, a lot of free editing apps, Snapseed, Photo Editor, both are really awesome. You can also use Photoshop, Illustrator. There are a lot of other open source um, apps that you can use on your computer, what have you. When you are, putting your portfolio together. Unless we are seeing you, 